What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, we got to talk about Assassin's Creed Shadows. It was officially revealed. We got a lot to talk about from the actual trailer itself to a lot of details on the game, but also some, I think, healthy skepticism, okay? And I do probably want to start there. I mean, we can maybe say my overall thoughts. Honestly, I like the trailer, okay? I think it's a really, really well-made trailer. It's honestly not a shock. Uh, it's something we've talked about, actually, when they announced, right, that today was going to be the day. I talked about it on Monday. Okay, what exactly can you expect to see on a day like today? You can't take it too seriously because if there's no gameplay, if there's no, like, in game stuff you know how far can you really go with excitement and I do think that applies in fact IGN did that 14 minute video which gave a lot of details and we'll talk about them but at the end even they kind of threw in that they were able to tour the office they saw a few things here and there but they never saw a full mission and they weren't allowed to play it so I guess what I'm saying here is I need to see more beyond anything else I'm going to say as this video goes on you've got to sh and they're going to it's not like like, you know, they're going to hide this until the day before it comes out. But I need to see gameplay. The number one, see all of the things that they talked about today in action. But number two, just to see it, just to check everything out and make sure that uh, it passes the eye test, at least for me. OK, so I do think that's important. And what I said on Monday, I think still applies here. Like the trailer was great. I really liked the visual style. Um, you got a little bit into the, the history of it. I even looked up some of the history on like Yasuke before uh, I watched the trailer. And, and I will say like one of the things I read about him was being like so big and strong, right? And then you see the trailer and it's like, okay, they're very much leaning into that one. They are definitely going to take historical liberties, you know, with what happens with him. But to be honest with you and to be fair, a lot of his life, even in the years that you know from like 79 1579 to I think like 1580 one I think is like kind of the fall so maybe like 82 is the last time you maybe hear about him there are a lot of gaps so I will say for the historical you know accurate people out there like look I get it like if you want it to be like point by point historically accurate you do you but it does seem like there's a lot of gaps in it. What we do know is a lot of like from letters. You don't know the day-to-day -day life. So I do think there's an opportunity there to tell that story. And if they tell it well, you know, that's different than telling it badly, right? But you, you, you can fill in, I guess, the gaps there, right? So what are some things that stood out? Well, you know, honestly, so far, I kind of dig the idea of these two being kind of separate, right? Like their play styles being separate. Nawe, honestly, seems like she might be an early favorite for me. Now that I don't like, now that I don't like the samurai kind of approach, but you do have the two approaches, right? One, you have very uh, stealthy and the grappling hook. I really like the idea of the grappling hook, the uh, dynamic kind of physics to it, right? So when they were talking about it, it sounded like maybe you could even throw it on the fly. So maybe you attack it to something you're flying up there and then you maybe throw it to somewhere else they talked about being able to do takedowns from it i think it was revealed from ign later that uh, not all takedowns have to be like uh, eliminations let's say for youtube you can do like pacifist routes basically there was again quite a bit actually revealed today not necessarily in the trailer but ign did like a 40 features breakdown and then they did like a 14 minute interview a lot of those things cross over but you got a good amount of details of the weather how the weather impacts things i love the sound of the weather uh the dynamics of it so in the summer there's going to be trees and they're going to have leaves on them. there's going to be grass the ability to hide there or a pond, right, say in the summertime, but in the wintertime, that pond is now ice, or the trees don't have leaves on them, so you can't hide in the trees anymore, but maybe you can hide in snow now. Uh, if it rains, the enemies are going to go towards uh, shelter, basically, right? They're not just going to stand out there in the rain. They also mentioned in the snow, they'll kind of congregate around uh, fire, right? So you can, uh, new roots basically open up to you. I like the sound of it. Like, a lot of what they pitched to me today does sound cool, and I just kind of need to see it in action, right? Because they also talked about the gameplay, the actual fighting, let's say, right? So you have the samurai being a little bit more heavier, actually a lot heavier, right? And he's kind of expected to just go, you know, barreling down. So if you're entering a castle or whatever, he's expected to kind of just walk through the front door. He can do stealth, but not really all that well. So you're going to actually want to just go in there. They talk 
talk about armor, that armor will degrade and you, you can break armor. And in the trailer, you see him breaking weapons and breaking armor. So you can kind of get that uh, a vibe, I guess, from the trailer anyway. But he can do that. And he's going to be more attack heavy, more just more heavy in general. Whereas Nawe is going to be more in the shadows. Even though they both say, or he says, uh, you know, we live in the shadows at the end of the trailer. He most certainly does not you know, live in the shadows. But a few other things that stood out to me as well. They talk about the spy system. That sounds really cool. Uh, going back to like brotherhood, right? Where you're going to be able to recruit people. And the way they talked about it, right, is, hey, if you're looking for something specific and you handle it the right way, these spies are going to be able to find those things that are specific. If maybe you miss something and you don't even realize you missed something, those spies might be able to tell you that, right? You're going to have kind of a hideout that sounds like you'll be able to build up. You see a little bit uh, of that in the trailer when like that card is handed off from one person to the next. The weather sounds cool. You know, I'm a water type guy, right? Um, the ability to be able to play as either of them and handling situations differently. They'll have their own missions, like specific missions to them, but most of the missions are going to be interchangeable. So you might, in, and if you play as one versus the other, you'll handle that differently. There was one individual that talked about too, uh, like a main quest, and a main quest might have parts to it, right? So maybe part one, you play as one of them, but then part two, you go to a different location. Maybe then you want to play as the other. Gotta be honest, I haven't been too much of a fan of it in the last little while. I mean, I played Mirage. I actually did like Mirage Origins. I, I replayed. I played actually all the way through maybe a year, year and a half ago. I actually really did enjoy Origins. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but I haven't played Valhalla or Odyssey. Now, they did talk about the map, and the map is actually going to be shrunk in a little bit. It's going to be, I, I believe they said, smaller than Origins or at least comparable to Origins. They talked about because of like the shrines and the temples and things like that, they take up a lot of space. So maybe it'll actually, it might be similar size to Origins, but it might actually feel smaller because the I, the buildings or whatever you want to call them, right, they're going to be bigger and take up more room. I'm fine with that. I actually prefer that. Um, I don't need, I know some Assassin's Creed games have been like 100 hour plus things. I don't need it to be that if they don't want it to be, right? I do want to throw in one huge negative that actually a, a follower of mine on Twitter mentioned and then I looked it up and I think like Reset Era and other people were talking about it. This is bad. And I will say that in terms of the entire thing, there is skepticism in terms of you need to show off what you're talking about and you're only going to have so much belief or excitement from people until you show it off at Ubisoft Forward, right? In just a few weeks, so it's not too much of a wait. But it has been spotted on PlayStation that online play, you're going to need to be uh, an internet connection, basically. No, thank you. No, thank you. It's got to be because of Assassin's Creed Infinity, right? Which is going to be that live service-y, uh, subscription service type model thing. I mean, we knew it was coming, but at the same time, now that it's here, I, I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased at all, especially, and people are pointing this out on, like, the forums. They just took away the crew. We just saw in real time a Ubisoft game. Yes, it's a, a decade plus old, but we just saw a Ubisoft game that needed internet to be played, literally get the internet ripped off, which means the game is not playable whatsoever. So you just saw that happen, I think, at the very end of March, and then Assassin's Creed, this new Assassin's Creed, is going to be tied to that. So, you know, again, like, can we please protect our games? Can we please be able to play Shadows in 20 years from now like we can Assassin's Creed 2? Assassin's Creed 2 turns 15 years old to, uh, this year, this October or whatever. You think Assassin's Creed Shadows is going to be around 15 years? I highly doubt it, personally. So that very much scares me. That's very much a bad thing. Maybe they can reverse it if people are loud enough. Uh, probably not. I would imagine probably not. But... The game itself, if I'm going to ignore that part just for a second or really for this whole video, no, there's a lot of promise here. Truly, that would probably be my overarching you know, opinion on this. A lot of promise. I think they pitched it, honestly, pretty good. I'm excited about basically the dynamics of things, like how they pitched that specifically speaks to me. I just need to see it in play. And maybe I should try out Valhalla or Odyssey before I get to this. But, you know, again, like I like Mirage. I like Origins. I feel like I'll be able to. If I can actually embrace it, if I can give it more than 10 hours of my time, I think I probably will like this game. But we'll see. You know, they got a lot to prove uh, at the Ubisoft Forward event. So I'll be covering that. We'll see what the game actually looks like when we get into it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed to the channel. Bell icon turned on. And I hope to see you all on the next one.